bed was shaking, and I felt like I was being strangled. The only thing I could move was my eyes, but I just felt like there was a presence in my room. It kind of had its own consciousness. Pressure. Dark. Holding me and down. Crushing. Screaming and screaming and asking for help, but your mouth isn't moving. I started to cry out to Jesus, and I couldn't even say his name. I, I said, J. And then the next thing I know is there's this woman on top of there me. There was a woman sitting on levitated me. in bed next to me. She looked dead. Ever since records began, there have been stories told of people being attacked during the night by nocturnal monsters or demons or spirits. These accounts have led to all kinds of myths and legends and, and, and beliefs about strange beings. This is the Boto. By day, a pink river dolphin of the Amazon, the Boto transforms nightly into a libidinous human-shaped prowler. Wearing a hat to disguise the breathing hole on top of his head, this notorious demon attacks sleepers in their beds. This bear-like creature, the Tokoloshe, is known to roam regions of Africa, impregnating women and biting off the toes of men and children under the cover of sleep. Very often people report that these kind of grotesque, monstrous figures will slowly approach them and then often will actually try to throttle them. The old hag of Newfoundland. Legend describes how she comes in the night and sits astride her sleeping victims, crushing the breath from their bodies. I think there's actually an alternative explanation. I think we're dealing there with the phenomenon of sleep paralysis. Back in the Middle Ages, the same court experience was interpreted as being attacked by sex-crazed demons. Lots of accusations of witchcraft were based on sleep paralysis. And what's very common now is that people will interpret episodes in that actually uh, they have been abducted by aliens. Anything that disturbs your sleep pattern makes it more likely to happen. So your anxiety about having a sleep paralysis attack means that you find it difficult to sleep, which means that when you do sleep, you're more likely to have one. In its most basic form, and by that I mean half awake, half asleep, and not being able to move, between 20 and 40% of the population report they've had that at least once in their lives. A smaller proportion, about 5% of the population, get associated symptoms, things like a sense of presence, hallucinations, pressure on the chest and difficulty breathing, and there's intense fear. During the normal sleep cycle, you go into REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And that's the phase of sleep that is typically associated with vivid dreaming. When you're in that state, the muscles of your body are actually paralyzed to stop you acting out the actions of the dream. What happens in sleep paralysis is that your mind has woken up, but your body hasn't. So you can't move, but you're aware of your surroundings. On top of that, the kind of dream imagery comes through into normal waking consciousness so that you get this altered state. in my room, like little squirrels, little dogs, different little, you know, regular world animals, and they were all black, black fur. And then I felt pinned down, and I felt something like holding me still from behind me, and I could just feel that it was a, it was male. It's so real. It, I can feel like his leg hair and his arm hair, and... I can feel him behind me, but I can't turn around. There's a very thin and very porous partition between the stuff of the real world and the stuff of the symbolic, imaginary, fantastical world. close to 
death as we get. When you're asleep, what you enter is an empty void that you're going to fall forever into. Are you awake? A very well-renowned psychiatrist told me that I was having psychotic episodes with possible seizures. And he put me on an antipsychotic and um, I took those drugs for like three years and of course they didn't help because that wasn't what was wrong with me. You're not going crazy, you're not being attacked by spirits, you're not being abducted by aliens. It's a physiological effect, it's a, a very vivid, hallucinatory experience. It's not real. It doesn't matter if it's real, because it feels real. And that's what matters, isn't it? What feels real is what really matters, isn't it? What really matters is what's real to you. Like the feeling you get that someone is walking behind you in the dark. Don't amount 